I didn't know myself as well as I thought I did. I don't feel like I have a mask up anymore. I feel like I'm being my true authentic self. And I, I realized that that energy is reciprocated tenfold when I am my authentic self. You taught me a lot of patience, the importance of waiting, the importance of not responding right away and making meaningful communication happen face to face or over the phone instead of over text. If your puzzle piece is mismatched to somebody else's puzzle piece, it doesn't matter how you love them or the way that you try to portray your love, if you guys aren't meant to be, it's just not gonna feel right. It really helped me fine tune and rediscover myself more than anything. I can't say, hey man, you have to save marriage. I, that's not my job. My job is to help you close the gap. This wasn't an easy journey going through the stages of grief and the loss and everything of the relationship was something that I couldn't have ever really done on my own. Still you went on where I'm at with my marriage right now. So obviously that was the kind of the central thing that brought us together. And after going through the first two stages of the program, uh, David, I keep remembering, I think it was the first time that you and I talked about the triangle, unlocking or discovering your higher identity, living by your higher identity, and then unlocking Nikki. And I keep thinking about that triangle and how I moved through the process. And the first two sections of discovering my higher identity and then living in my higher identity were by far some of the most beneficial bits of training or comprehension or any sort of advice or anything along those lines that I have received in a very, very long time. And I think that the first eight weeks of the program or so really helped me fine tune and rediscover myself more than anything. I think something that I told a friend of mine is that I feel like I knew who I was for a really long time. And after going through the program, it made me realize that I didn't know myself as well as I thought I did. And I was carrying myself in a way that I didn't really like. And now having gone through that bit of the program and kind of redefining who I am has been invaluable to me. It's been really, really eye-opening to me as how I have maybe changed a lot in my relationship and how I've maybe pushed boundaries to the side that I would have considered deal breakers before in the past. Like, it really made me analyze where I was at in the relationship and maybe close some things apart a little bit and realize that I know the love that I had for Nikki was unconditional love. And even to this day, even having this conversation with you right now, I want what's best for her. And I just don't think that that's something that I'm going to be able to offer for her. And I don't think that she was maybe willing or able to offer me what I needed in a relationship. And I think being able to take a step back and, you know, again, going through the program and realizing what my wants and needs are from a partner and for myself and who I want to be. And I just don't think that we align at this moment. And maybe there is a possibility down the road. The future is never predetermined. And who knows? Yeah, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. The, the, one of the things, what the reason why I, I consider it a deal breaker before bringing someone to the program, if they're not interested in becoming their higher identity is because quite frankly, the marriage is not the main piece. The higher identity is the main piece. Yeah. Because if they don't want to become the higher identity, I can't help them with anything. Now, if they do want to become the higher identity, I've seen, you're not the first, second or third guy that said this to me. I, I'm not surprised. And that's why I grew you in the first time. I'm like eight years. You don't have any kids together. There's certain warning signs there. At the same time, I wasn't not gonna not give you an opportunity to become your identity because you were in so much pain. But I've seen this before where someone comes through the program and like halfway or two thirds through the program, they're like, David, I'll tell you what, I love it. I love every bit of it, but to you, honestly, right now, I'm just not crazy over pursuing my wife. And and yeah. my job as your coach is you're you're my client. I cannot tell you what your goal is. I can't say, hey man, you have to save your marriage. I, that's not my job. My job is to help you close the gap from where you were to where you want to go. And if where you want to go has changed, then I kind of have to pivot as well. So I'm really proud of the work you've done. And it's, I'm not shocked at all, but I, I couldn't say that to you because I needed to give you every opportunity you have because we're talking about your entire future right now, not just Nikki. We're talking about your entire life. And that was at stake. And I'm, I'm proud of the work you've done. I really am. I'm uh, proud of the work that I've done. I know that this wasn't an easy journey going through the stages of grief and the loss and everything of the relationship was something that I couldn't have ever really done on my own. So 
having AMFT as like you mentioned, a way to bridge that gap, again, invaluable. I, I think that I would have chased a lot more. I would have bothered Nikki a lot more to the point where it would have fractured our relationship even more. So you, you taught me a lot of patience, the importance of waiting, the importance of not responding right away and making meaningful communication happen face to face or over the phone instead of over text. And at the end of the day, I know that even if Nikki isn't the one that's going to benefit from this, I benefited from this greatly. And I don't regret spending a penny on the program. I've thought about that a lot as I was going through this. I was like, do I really feel like I wasted any money? And if I don't pursue her and the answer I kept coming back to was not even a little bit. Because at the end of the day, the growth that I had, even in the first two to three weeks of your program were already far more valuable than what I had paid for. Why do you say that? What happened then in the first two, three weeks? If you're able to break apart, because you've been in the program for a while, but if you're able to go back and say just the first two, three weeks, what was it over there that made you just say what you said? Oh, the inner cat in and of itself was worth the weight in gold. Like it was so important for me to be able to break down why I showed up to the relationship the way that I did and come to terms with those things about my past, my childhood, and just identifying that inner cat. And even now, I mean, if I could be candidly honest with you, like there's been a couple of women that I've talked to, maybe not in any serious form, but I can see the way that stuff like doctor patient works now. Your, all of those beginning principles that you really learn in like week one and two, week three, I see it now as it's happening in conversations. I'm like, wow, this would be an opportunity for me to show up for this person. And when I do that now, I can see that reciprocated energy back and forth. And it's like, wow, I, I didn't know that this was the recipe of the cake. And here's how I'm putting it together. By the way, I'm, I'm totally up for hearing that because my goal here is not Nikki. My goal over here is you. Me. Right, exactly. You're my client, not Nikki. You're not the first or second guy that said, "Hey, man, I'm using this stuff, but I'm on another woman." David, that's. Uh, but I, I'm very interested in what you said that when you say that energy being reciprocated. What do you need one notice from these women that you're interacting with? That's like, oh my God, this this recipe is coming together. What is it? So there's one woman that I've been talking to a lot in particular. We actually do have a history with each other that predates me and Nikki, but it never really worked out. And then we reconnected somehow very randomly. And what I mean when I say that reciprocated energy is it's almost like she's holding up a mirror. When I am putting out the, the, a specific energy, when I talk about the things that I've had going on in my past or what's gotten me to the point that I'm at, I mean that she holds a mirror up and that she will throw it right back to me. She feels comfortable and safe being able to express what she's gone through. And that's something that she even says that she's never had that with somebody else before, where she felt like it was that stage of the day. That's what I wanted with Nikki for the longest time was to be that safe space. And what I realized now is that relationships are very much so like a puzzle. And if your puzzle piece is mismatched to somebody else's puzzle piece, it doesn't matter how you love them or the way that you try to portray your love, if you guys aren't meant to be, it's just not going to steal the right. And I'm not to say, I'm not saying that that's what the situation was for me and Nikki, but experiencing it now with somebody different where it's like, wow, the puzzle piece just feels like it fits flawlessly. Like, how does that happen? And being in a relationship for the last nine years, I'm like, wow, I feel like I was trying to fit a round peg through a square hole for a while. I feel like I found the, the right puzzle piece now. And I'm not saying that this is it for me, but it's just interesting seeing a different perspective. It definitely is, and it's touching to hear you describing it because it really makes me happy to see you applying this and seeing success with another woman. Success is not like a black and white thing, it's in degrees. And the interesting thing though, just to note, it's not just the puzzle piece fitting, it's also your own puzzle piece changing. Yeah. So the puzzle piece that you wore a couple of months ago, probably wouldn't be compatible with the woman you're dating right now either. Correct. And that's where I think the majority of the value is, is like, I don't feel like I have a mask up anymore. I feel like I'm being my true authentic self. And I, I realize that that energy is reciprocated tenfold when I am my authentic self. Yes. And we've, we've spoken about it in the modules quite a few times. I used the number 10, although it, it could be more than that. Women have the ability to love 10 times more. They also have the ability when they're upset to be frustrated 10 times more. It's a kind of the pendulum sweetens in both directions. And the key of 
really putting together this recipe is really to understand how to, as much as possible, keep them in the direction where they're reciprocating 10 times love than 10 times of the frustration and the anger and the, the, the resentment, anxiety and whatnot. What are your next steps in terms of your personal transformation, your higher identity development? And talk to me a little bit about that. In terms of my personal growth and development, I'm going to keep myself as active as possible. Keeping myself out in nature, I think I've found is something that really helps me stay connected to myself and who I want to be. And just keeping myself aligned with the right type of people. I think personal transformation wise, I've still been reading books, trying to keep myself active in my community, my dance community out here. Yesterday, I went out to my friend's birthday with a bunch of other people that are in the dance community. And that's something that really makes me feel like my whole self. And I feel like for the longest time, like not throughout my entire relationship, but over the last three to four years, I've really pushed myself away from a lot of the things that brought me joy. And it wasn't because Nikki had ever told me to. It was more so just like, I don't know, it was something. Yeah, I'd, oh. it's, it's the person you become. Look, like when someone is going through marriage cancer intentionally, it's not necessarily the wife's fault. Not everything is the wife's fault, but things that happen in the relationship cause the husband, right? Things happen to the wife too, but we're talking to men, right? So talking to the husband, talking to you, things happen that make you feel in a way that certain things that may bring you joy just don't even come up as an idea because you're so in a place of like survival or defense or just trying to cope it's so interconnected what's going on into your marriage and, and what's going on in your personal transformation or what's going on in your psyche it's sad but it does make sense that we sometimes lose years we lose years to this and kind of part of what happens but what i'm proud of is that you nipped it in the bud some guys come to him and when they're 50 or 60 years old and and kudos to them it's not easy oh yeah there's you know, people that, that go their entire lives without finding this sort of transformation. Right. I feel blessed that I'm 32. I'm so young and spry. I've got a lot of life ahead of me. So I think that this type of transformation at this stage of my life, I'm so grateful to have come across your program, to have spoken with the men that I did. Everybody that was in my sport chat was there when I reached out to, especially early. I was really, really lost. And yeah, I think the only word that I can really use for it that fits is just invaluable. I remember you saying something earlier too about the value you're going to get from the program is going to be more than you ever spent on it. Again, I saw that very early. It just made the whole process of getting to this point that much easier. I'm staring down the barrel, I think this week of signing some divorce paperwork and had I not been AMFT, I think I would be an absolute mess right now. So, so thank you, David. Thank you, everybody else, too. All the men that have reached out and were there for me. And the, well, there's so much to say about that. I mean, just from the perspective of divorce, divorce never feels good. But ultimately, legal divorce is not an emotional divorce. In other words, if you want to pursue Nikki, and it's pretty clear from our conversation here that you're not. But if you were to, it really doesn't make a difference if you're legally divorced or not. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, the legal divorce kind of gives a sense of reclosing a chapter and then opening another chapter which has happened i've seen guys get remarried to the very same spouse that they got divorced and it's a new chapter so it, it's but still it's so interesting how, how mentally it still feels like you said steering down the barrel is a, a phrase associated with something which is like scary and like wow even though you're really at peace with that and it kind of doesn't make a difference but we're so wired to be anxious over certain things that, that it's a supposed to be stressful because divorce is stressful and it is for most people but it doesn't really have to be with, with the person that you're becoming of the the higher identity or the person transformation that you be into anything else that you want to share david i appreciate how connected you are with uh, all your clients your uh, responsiveness everything about this program then it, it blew my expectations out of the water beautiful i appreciate you you share what you share. I do put a lot of my heart into this and it's really rewarding to see somebody, what they can get out of it, even under your circumstances where the marriage itself does not survive, but for you to be able to, to walk out with what you have right now and, and just have a good attitude and the joy and the energy. Guys who are going through marriage cancer, they need a lot of hope. And even if I can't help them, for whatever reason, they don't qualify, but to give them hope, maybe there's another coach that can help them. Maybe there's something else they can do. Some guys struggle with addiction, 
So I cannot help them when they have active addiction. But what they need to see is that you can have a long-term turnaround. It's not just a short-term breakthrough, but a long-term turnaround. And it can be something which lasts and it really permeates and it, and it expresses itself in every part of your life, in your work, close friends, an intimate partner, with kids to have and out, operate from your identity in a, on a long-term basis. I mean, because it's such a powerful and beautiful thing for men to see.